Hello and welcome to part 2 of how to create a sand table. In this video we're going to talk a bit about the hardware. So um, as you see here there are several layers. Oh let's take the camera a bit more down and you see them more. So there are several layers and uh, one big thing is that you have to uh, cut out circles. There are a lot of YouTube tutorials about this. I uh, use this router here with uh, this construction here. I found it in some German uh, uh, tutorial. There are a lot of tutorials about how to do this. I decided to use um, a 6 millimeter pin because it's dividable by 2 and you can measure just from this point or from this point and divide or, uh, or subtract or add uh, three millimeters and then you are at the center. So uh, this is how I cut out uh, my circles, but there are a lot of tutorials and it depends on your tools. Yeah, so um, let's start from the outside to the inside and then from bottom to top. Um, this foil here is from automotive, from the automotive industry to uh, reduce noise. So, uh, yeah, the noise reduction is very good here. Uh, it damps the vibration. And, uh, yeah, so for the rest, I just brought this table off the shelf and cut out the center, uh, cut out an inner LED ring. So, uh, I, I no, don't know if you can see it. Um, the ring is on the downside of the table and so that you can't see it when you look flat onto the table. Yeah, here's another ring. I think you can spare a lot of wood. I uh, yeah, I over-engineered it a bit, so uh, yeah. But it, it's the, that way now. So this ring, I take this out. So here we have our uh, sand table. This ring protects the sand from uh, being dragged out of the uh, out of the uh, sand area, yeah. There's another uh, construction underneath here that's holding the wooden plate. I don't think that's necessarily needed. Um, one tip: uh, make the table that you can uh, <laughs> that you can uh, take it apart. You will take it apart so often. Yeah. One other th tip is drill all holes through all layers at once. So um, stack every layer you want to do and start with the center hole so that the center is always at the same, pl uh, at the same uh, uh, place. Then drill all the holes in the circle. Mark every uh, every layer with an X so that you that they are always on uh, arranged the same way yeah so uh, yeah then <laughs> you don't have to puzzle <laughs> it, it took me a while to figure that out that I have to do it that way so um, yeah that's two tips uh, let's go to the next layer so I take this away And now we see the now we see the construction. I've uh, thought about so. Um, let's stop this for a moment. So let's go here and set the speed to zero. Now it stopped. I adjust the camera a bit. Okay. So, what do we have here? We have an inner gearing here. It's a cutout circle and then I glued a timing belt in here. It's a GT2 belt. This is also GT2. Um, yes. Here in the middle we have an arm. Here's a slider. We talk about that later. One stepper motor and uh, stepper motor 2, you can see it here. Yeah, let's force this a bit to the center. So here's another stepper motor. They are balanced here. 
one mistake I made is this stepper motor is a bit too far to the outside. So um, yeah, I have to be precise here at this measurement when it would be a centimeter more to the center than I had more room here. Here we have a wooden spring that presses this um, motor to the outer ring or to this inner gearing ring. Um, a Raspberry Pi BPIO, two stepper drivers and two magnetic field sensors here and here for calibration. So this sensor detects this magnet, this sensor detects this magnet. Um, yeah, this could be much simpler. It's grown a bit that way. So I would, for example, now put this magnet somewhere here, for example, or the, yeah, and the sensor on the other side here so that they don't interfere. Um, yeah. You see here my um, work on reducing noise and cutting out the holes and this here, we talk about that later. So let's talk a bit about here the linear um, uh, linear Führung, what's the English word? Uh, you know what I mean, this here. My first construction was like this with this one and yeah, it was not good for balance so I had oh, the two motors here on this side but that's not the problem. With this uh, linear uh, thing, it's the, the problem is that you need too much turns for a small movement. So one turn makes, I think, eight millimeters or four. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, the motors are too driving at a too high speed. Here we are making two or three centimeters per turn. It's much better. So. Um, and with these here, they aren't so. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have to put it into camera. <laughs> so um, yeah, they are uh, not good for taking a momentum. So yeah, they are a bit slippy. They get you get too much force uh, against your movement when you. Uh, when you have a momentum here, so uh, I tried different, uh, I tried different uh, sliders, gliders, Teflon gliders, and ball-based gliders. The the ball gliders, um, there's a ball bearing inside, and it makes too much noise. Here's in this, these ones, there's uh, also. Um, little steel balls in this uh, uh, on this glider here but they don't make so much noise and yeah it's uh, much better so uh, take one of these instead uh, this one okay so now what to talk else about um, yeah let's talk about this screw here, can you see it? Yeah. Um, underneath this screw, there's a ball bearing, and underneath this ball bearing, there is a slip contact. Yeah. So this is the only thing I don't like on this construction, but uh, slipping contacts are not that expensive, and for the rest, the rest of the construction is very simple. The only thing you need to do is cut out uh, circles. The rest is very, very simple. So uh, let's talk a bit about the screw in the middle. So we have, um, bup, bup, bup. where's the wooden uh, thing I had? Yeah, take it one second. So we have uh, the screw 
the screw is uh, holding a bearing. So the bearing is underneath this wood and here's the screw. How to cut out, how to make a center hole in the screw. I did it, I take a standing drill, I took a standing drill, take a piece of wood, bore a hole in it with the same diameter as your screw, then put the screw in, change the drill bit, and then you are perfectly centered and aligned. Um, yeah, but there are a lot of ways making a hole in the screw, um, so you will figure that out. Yeah, so that's about the slip contact. Let's talk a bit about the base construction. So the base, I mean uh, the last layer here. I cut out a bit too much wood and it wasn't stable enough so I had to can you how can I show it to you I want to show this here so I had to stabilize this and this brings a lot of noise in the table so I would I would start with the base the next time make it stable make it on good wood and mount it yeah in a um in a decoupled way to the outer surface of the table when you have find out your base then you know how much height you have and then you can uh find a way to make your next layers and then important i said it's this before drill all the holes at once so take your base and the other layers and drill the center hole through all layers at once. The center hole is important. And then the mountings also uh, when you, at the first time without moving the layers uh, in between the drilling process. So I think that's basically it. Here you see, do you see that here? Yeah, so here there's the blue pill from the other video. Um, it's dimming the light, so when it's outside, uh, I've made a short video about that. So, uh, yeah, a video about the embed runtime will come also. So, I think that's basically it. Yeah, the, yeah, you know, um, yeah, the. The slipper contact takes the power, uh, takes yeah the power, and the power comes from a USB. Can I let me show this to you? Ah yeah, so here's uh, a USB C, uh, a USB C uh, power converter takes 15 volts or makes 15 volts for the stepper motors, and uh, yeah. That's converted here to 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi and BPIO. So now I'm finished. Thank you for watching. See you in part 3. Bye bye.